Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Bear Family Farms. Long time no see, I know, I know. But today it is the beginning of a new season out here and a wonderful but chilly west man. So I thought we would take a look at the permaculture, see what's uh, going on, see what survived the winter and uh, I don't know what kind of season we can hopefully predict from what's, I don't know, maybe starting to grow. Let's get started. So we'll start here with the Polar Jewel Honeyberry. This is what I took the few cuttings from down in the aquaponic garden over the winter. They didn't necessarily make it, I'm not terribly surprised. I did, however, plant some berries from this and its little cousin up over there. And we have some itty bitty seedlings in the aquaponic garden. So we might be able to get a few more bushes from that. I will be trying some air layering attempts on this this year because to me these look like a lot of happy healthy leaf buds on this i was kind of worried because we've had a weird winter a lot of warm cold cold warm just back and forth and i've been quite nervous for how these bushes are going to do with all that but so far hopefully you can see this on the camera all i'm getting is glare on the viewfinder but yeah so far looking pretty decent one thing that's always a good indicator of the season around here is the gooseberries, so let's check that out next. Now because of last year's air layering projects, we have a couple of places that we can check and see how the gooseberries are doing. We'll start here with the original planting that we brought with us and put into the ground. Well, I guess this is its sixth winter in the ground. This thing is only supposed to ever get to be about four feet by four feet, but it produces just these wonderful tart, uniquely flavored little purple berries that I am absolutely hooked on. And yeah, as you'll see from the second location, this one is wonderfully easy to propagate. I've had uh, one set up here over the winter just to kind of see if, I don't know, going into the soil over the winter, it just automatically produces roots in the spring. That's what with the first shot of the uh, honeyberries was too. We've got the rock on there kind of hopefully breaking the twig a little bit and, and forcing some connection with the soil so that it produces some roots for us. But again, if we get a little bit closer here, hopefully the camera will focus, we can see some really nice leaf buds on here. So I think this has again survived another really weird Manitoba winter which I don't worry about so much with the plants that I've gotten since we've been out here, but the things that we brought from BC just kinda, they were never really intended for that. I, I wasn't looking into zone qualifications when I bought these things. So it's pure luck that I purchased things that have survived. But anyway, yeah, so here's the initial gooseberry. And then if we just turn to the right, we've got that swale hugel bed thing that I made a few years back with Shock's help. And I've never really been sure what to put in here as far as like the annual garden, right? So what I did is I took 14 of the uh, rooted layering cuttings from that gooseberry and I have planted them in a nice pretty little row all the way up the center of this swale. And then in the back, you can see something by the solar light that's a little bit taller. So we'll just boot around. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is where I ended up putting the red currant cutting. So it'll kind of tower over these much lower gooseberries when everything fills out. But I'm thinking maybe a few more currants along the back here, create kind of a wall and then the lower gooseberries. And then I might put I don't know, some kind of, um, I believe they're classified as ephemerals, but basically bulbing or bulbs that eh, throw up flowers for a short time and then disappear for the rest of the season. Again, with the concept of bee food, but also, I don't know, something to fill up that shorter row in the front there. For these first couple of years, I'm thinking various types of root crop. I'm just going to sink them in there and let them die with winter kill and leave their collective carbon in the mound. Build it up, hopefully develop some 
I don't know, carbon in, in the soil and yeah, hopefully help these things grow nice and big and healthy and productive. It's the plan anyway. Speaking of plants that we brought with us, we've got the smoky Saskatoon here, planted over by the chicken coop. Let's see, one of the girls staring at us there. This Saskatoon bush has done ridiculously well, but that makes sense. I mean, these plants in general are meant for this kind of climate. A lot of people know these as service berries or June berries. They've always been Saskatoons to me, but Canadians, what do you do, eh? This thing though has already grown up to, I would say, probably 11 feet at its peak. Last year's air layering attempt <laughs> did not produce roots, and did not slow down the plant one bit. So yeah, we should actually get some berries off of this this year. There were a few last year, but not nothing to email home about, you know? Again though, I see really nice looking leaf buds and nodes here. This should be beautiful, which is great because it covers up the less than beautiful long shed behind it. Also tucked in behind it though, there we have one of the recently relocated uh, beaked hazelnut. I would imagine this is because this is definitely the native Canadian variety. So yeah, it's going to be beaked. If this ever produces anything, they will be just itty bitty teeny tiny hazelnuts. But considering I nicked it for free from the forest floor area where otherwise the deer are eating them and uh, there were literally thousands of these things growing. So I didn't take the last one, I assure you, because never take the last when you're gathering from nature, right? But if there are plenty, take one or two. No one's going to care. Anyway, this seems to have survived. So that is really exciting. Curious to see how that's going to look as it fills out over the coming year. Yeah, tragically, the rest of those beaked hazelnuts that I planted are right in front of that orange fence that you see there. So they are getting the ultimate snow survival test in this corner of neglect that actually has quite a few things in it. There are raspberries back there, there are Saskatoons, there are a couple attempts to uh, transplant, was it hawthorn berries, hawthorn apples? Yeah, so. Hopefully, those beaked hazels, beaked hazelnuts, will have survived. Most other things have so far, so it does this every year. So all that snow blows right off the field. Nothing to catch it there really, right? Just some stubble. Hits this fence, swirls over, stops. It's good. Fuzzy was tobogganing down these one year, they were Huh, ridiculously high. This really isn't so bad compared to what we've seen before. But anyway, moving along, which I guess would bring us to the cherry tree. This has only been in the ground here a couple of years, but it looks to me like it's doing all right. And again, we see some very healthy, uh, well, not that branch. What's going on here? Otherwise though, we're seeing some pretty healthy leaf buds, leaf nodes. Now I've got a lot of uh, young cherry trees, we'll say, shoots coming up at the bottom before it was grafted. And I should probably remove those. But again, much like the Saskatoons up front that we'll try and get to, I'm gonna try air layering these because that's obviously a good rootstock for this climate. And I want to try, if I can get roots on some of those, I'm going to try grafting some cuttings from these to make more or less an exact replica of the grafted cherry tree that I purchased so that we can have, you know, more cherry trees. Two is one, one is none. One cherry tree's not going to make a lot of jam. Which I guess brings us to our most recent tree addition that I don't have anywhere near as much experience within the springs yet, so I just don't know how I feel about how this is doing. But apparently, this seemingly still living pear tree, it's got three different varieties of pear on it. So since they're normally not self-fertile, having the three varieties in theory 
<laughs> in theory, famous last words for Mr. Bear. But anyway, in theory, having the three varieties on there means that they will get the cross pollination that they need for this singular pear tree to be productive, which is a really neat idea. And for what we paid for the thing, oh, it's gonna be some expensive fruit for those first few years. So I'm really hoping that it has survived. I believe this is its second winter with us. We have not yet gotten fruit off of this thing, but it has been a delight to watch it grow. And it has grown a fair bit. I mean, we got this thing into a Ford Fusion bringing it home. So yeah, it's, it's grown, a, I'd say a couple of feet at least. But, has it grown enough and settled in enough to be productive? That's the question, isn't it? Now, if we just take a quick look at the red current here in passing, things look kind of grim. Certainly doesn't look as green and vibrant as the cuttings are down in the aquaponics. But if we look at the top here, again, I see fairly healthy looking leaf nodes. So that's good. This has been a few years in its current location. I couldn't let that one pass by. I'll just have to beg forgiveness on that. But it's really settled in quite nicely. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to adding a few more, maybe one or two here. And then, like I said, a couple more in the swale with the gooseberries. I think that'll provide a really nice sort of look. But definitely a couple more here with the original parent plant. And uh, yeah, I am thrilled to see just how easy it is to turn one red currant bush into half a dozen. And then huh, we'll just have to see where it goes from there, won't we? And then in the front yard here, we can see the stuff that uh, was grandfathered into our possession, kind of came with the house. So you gotta like that. These Saskatoons, wowzers. I look up there probably my height and maybe half again so what is that 6 12 add another three maybe 15 feet tall considering i'm standing on some pretty deep snow at the moment but down in the base hopefully you can get some idea of the numbers shooting up down there that i'm gonna hopefully hopefully throw some roots onto and spread them around because i'm still working on the idea of an edible fence line it says, hey, this is my yard, while well, at the same time saying, if you're hungry, have a bite to eat. Friendly fencing, you gotta like that. And I guess that pillar's in the way for this next shot, isn't it? That leaves us with our rather wacky looking apple trees that are in desperate need of a proper pruning. And I've done a little reading, so I'm starting to get a slightly better idea of what I need to do to manage these things. This one we're looking at though right now seems to be something of a masting variety. Kind of only produces every second year. Um, and in the in-between years, I mean, it does put on a couple of apples, but they're few and far between and rather hard to get to. So I want to bring down the overall height of this tree with the pruning. And then I want to get a lot of those, oh, I want to call them sun shoots whatever the uh, ones coming off the branches that are shooting straight up are pretty much all destined for somebody's happy wood smoke because i hear apple wood is good for that uh, we got a lot of that going on with this crab apple tree here too the birds absolutely love it but i'll show you the ground underneath it even the birds can't hope to keep up with this thing so there are a couple of rather lengthy branches i'll be bringing off of that this year but here you can get some idea of just how many crab apples there are. And the other day I came out here and there must have been 50 birds doing this weird little rotation. They were trying to grab them from up in the tree and then knocking them to the ground and coming down here and flying off into those trees there to enjoy the crab apple and then coming back to the crab apple, knocking it down. And like I said, they can't even hope to keep up with the numbers. So trimming this back a little bit, I don't think is gonna cause any harm. <laughs> it's just gonna save me a few hours with the rake in the spring. And uh, 
a few more hours picking crab apples out of my boots. All right, everybody, so there you go. Just kind of a quick look at what's going on pre-season here with the urban permaculture that we have on our little half acre homestead on the edge of town. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a really, it's gonna be a good season. Most of these trees and shrubs look like they're not really too badly damaged by the awkward winter that we had. So as long as things continue to move forward with the temperatures, we are in solid shape. We are in solid shape. And we've seen geese pretty much every day for the last week. So if the wildlife thinks it's warming up, that's probably a good sign too. All right, everybody, if you're still with me, thank you so much for joining me. And as we take a quick look around at what's going on, yes, Bear Family Farms does still exist. I'm still out there. I've just been hiding under a rock. That's how it goes, you know, that's this quotes modern world that none of us really like. Anyway, that's a different story. So, otherwise, if you're still with me and you're new to the channel, please feel free to click subscribe, click the notification bell because my video schedule is completely random, so that's kind of the only way you're gonna know when I put new stuff up there because I don't do any of that fancy thumbnail crap or, yeah, notification bell is your best bet. Plus, there's a better chance of me going live on this channel than on the main channel, so yeah, another good reason to hit that bell. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic day ahead of you. And yeah, I suspect we're all looking to a wonderful, wonderful year out in the yard and gardens for 2021. Take care, everybody.